Hey, it's Avril Lavigne, and I just did an interview here on the Zach Sang Show. Let's do this. Zach Sang Show. Hello, beautiful human. What are you doing there, Daniel? Nothing. <laughs> we're in the presence of. I don't like. You can say it. We're in the presence of a human, be- an icon, a human being yep. who has shaped music for me and so many others, and shaped. Uh, you shape culture at large. Like, Avril Lavigne's here. Yeah. <laughs> so thank cool. Aw, thank you for having me. Is it, like, is it crazy to think about the fact that a young girl from Canada was able to make an impact on culture and an entire generation that is still felt today, but not only felt by the generation that, like, shared and, like, really got a chance to enjoy your music, but it's being passed on to those coming next. I mean, it's hard to think for myself, it's hard to think of it that way, but I mean, I can't even believe it. I mean, my first song Complicated came out when I in 2002, guys. <laughs> like, what's that? 17 years ago? Yeah. And you were 17. Yeah. And I was 17. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's really cool cuz I came out during this time where you know, Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera and NSYNC and everybody was like, like having backup dancers, like super pop music. And when I was making my album, um, the first one, I just kept being like, you know, I just want guitars <laughs> and I just want to sound like a band. And I was trying to like express myself like as a young artist and just be like, I just want my music to be like kind of cool and rock and to hear music and to... And um, I was embraced by, like, a record company that, even though that wasn't, like, the thing at the time, like, seeing too many young sort of pop rock artists, at, especially at that time, L.A. Reid, who signed me and discovered me, he just, like, looked at me. Probably I was dressed like this in his <laughs> office, just, like, super cash. And he was, like, I was, like, 15 or 16, 16 and he was, like, you know what? Like, you have your own thing going on. Like, normally we would put you with, like, you know, stylists and whatever, and you'd figure out a style and who you are. He's like, just be you. Whatever you got, <laughs> this thing you got going on, just do that. And I was able to really just follow my gut and my intuition and, you know, well, make that music that I made. What does that do for your confidence? Because... Growing up, it was like preps versus the punks, right? Totally. And, and people judged you for this lifestyle and the eyeliner and what you wore. When Yeah, I kind of like got a bit of a hard time for it. Now it's like people accept that more and tattoos and colored hair. But, but like people were mean to me about that stuff, like having like green and pink in my hair and black nails and whatever, black <laughs> eyeliner. Because it was just against the norm. It was against yeah. the grain, which then turned into the mainstream, essentially. Yeah. Is it... How do you feel as a young kid when somebody like some big, fancy music executive yeah. looks at you and goes, do you? Because no matter what everybody else is saying, what you are is something special that needs to be... That, that you need to see where it goes, and it can't be held back. I don't think I really got it until, like, later. So, like, hindsight, now looking back, it's like, Wow. That was cool. Like, L.A. Reid, he sort of just was like, okay, do your thing. And, I mean, I definitely had to fight because, like, I was writing. I wrote that first album. I spent, like, a whole entire year, and I wrote with a lot of different people. And because I was so young, they were sort of expecting people to just hand me songs. And so, like, I would sing some of these songs, and I hated them. And so I had to fight to write. Because I was so young, I don't think they really knew, like, how much I could write or not. And there was, like, a lot of collaborating and me taking songs that I had started on my own and just me also finding my way and discovering, like, who am I? What am I going for? Um, Is it confusing when you're 17 to be writing such emotional records because it's, like, you you are still discovering yourself? Yes. Like, does that help you discover yourself, the, the writing process? It was all just really natural for me. I had moments that like I would even think to myself where is this coming from (laughs) like or I'd listen back to a song and just feel like how am I coming up with that stuff and that's like writing music 
is kind of like a magical experience. Like you can tap into like different, you know, your past or who knows, maybe a past life. Like, I don't know. Um, and, and like just different scenarios. And I was just very musical and expressive. And, and I liked writing like little poems when I was younger. I was around a lot of music like in church and like, and I started singing there and then like, country fairs i'd go sing there you did country covers that's mm-hmm. how you were discovered kind of yeah captured on vhs and sent around yeah. <laughs> what was it about that country genre that kind of brought you in well it was more like where can i sing where can i perform you know i, I was picking up the guitar at 14 and started like writing and then when i was seven my mom could tell that i could sing and I liked that, and she got me, like, up on stage in church. (laughs) And then I was like, okay, now what's next? Okay, so there's, like, little banquets and fairs and stuff like that around town. So it's like, okay, singing, like, country songs to fit in there. In Canada. In Canada, in my tiny little town of 5,000 people. Literally. (laughs) That's the population. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So everybody knows that you're a singer in town. Yeah, I was known uh, in high school. I was like, oh, the singer girl. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you're a skater. Yeah. Well, so like in grade nine, so like grade nine, grade 10 in high school. Yeah, I started skateboarding then and getting, getting in trouble, but it wasn't that bad. <laughs> Just getting expelled for like drinking beer and like hockey, <laughs> hockey tournaments, getting expelled from that. It happens. <laughs> Um, Are you writing during this rebellious phase of life? So that's kind of when I started picking up the guitar. So I started singing in church and then these country fairs. And then I got to a point when I was, I guess, 15, going into grade nine, beginning high school. I kind of was like, okay, like, this isn't cool. Like, I was kind of like, wait, I don't know. I kind of took like a step back for a minute and was like, I don't really want to do that right now. Like. What was so that? So I started, was it like- I stopped for a second and I kind of was like, what do I do? Because like, I was like, again, discovering myself and started listening to like Green Day and like skateboarding <laughs> and like smoking cigarettes and <laughs> drinking beer and, you know, wearing really baggy pants. And um, and that's when and meeting other kids in, in high school and hanging out with guys and play guitar and skateboarded and like, So that's when I started writing in my room when I'd come home from school and and I paused on church and country and all that stuff, still going to church, but just not singing those songs and started kind of coming up with the stuff that was like developing me into being the artist that I became on my first album, which was true. That was the transition from from that into me being, I guess, pop rock. But, like, just normal teenage life, right? Yeah. But with a different level of intuition. Because the records were based on reality. Yeah. The the records on uh, Let Go. Well, Skater Boy um, came because I sat down with Lauren Christie of The Matrix. And when we were writing on my first album, I was just like, okay, so I like guys that have skate shoes on. So if I'm walking down the street and, like, see a guy with skater shoes on, and, like, we literally were just having this, like, conversation, and it was just so natural, and I had, like, those are the guys that, like, I had crushes on, so we just wrote a song called Skater Boy. Do, do you have a shoe brand preference? I know that was, like, a big deal in the skater world, right? Like, well, you got your DCs and your Etnies? Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> Do people still wear those? I don't think so. I'm into like Vans now. They're, see, those are cool. Do you remember the DCs? They were so fat. They're and the so song? big, and I still have them. Like but, at my other house, I still have them. But like, I put, I do have a new pair, and I put it on like probably six months ago, and I was just like, yeah, I don't know if I can like rock these right now. Not with this, not with the skinny jeans. I, I don't want to be that guy, but I, I might say that the DC was the Balenciaga of the 2000s, yeah. like the early 2000s. Oh, yeah. You know, those chunky fat shoes. Yeah, definitely. Who came up with the spelling for Skater Boy? Because I feel like that eight and skate, like, changed the way the world <laughs> And the B-O-I. Come on. 
<laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> like that H just fits there perfectly. And then <laughs> I, later comes after that in my world. <laughs> Everything deserved an eight when there was an ER. It's I, there's something about I mean complicated. Just back to that for a second. You know that's number 47 on NPR's list of the greatest songs of the 21st century written by a female. That's dope. That Like, the 21st century. Just wild to rap. Yeah. It's crazy because I see the effects. He was a skater boy. He was a skater boy. <laughs> she said, <laughs> see you later, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you... you <laughs> Is that, is that like weird? Uh, okay. Writing for you, you've described it magical here. I've heard you describe it as spiritual. Has it always been like that? Has that been like a constant throughout the creation process for you? Like recently, like on this new album, Head Above Water, Beautiful. this was like a whole new experience for me in a way. So like the first album compared to this one and the ones in between, like this, like I've obviously like, I went through a lot. I had to take like a few years off. I got sick. Didn't know if I'd still be like working or have a career or like what was gonna happen. And then I just started writing like while I was in bed and like all these song concepts like came to me. And like, it was the first time I ever took a break and it's cool because like I wasn't trying to write a record. It just like all these song ideas were just coming to me. And now I'm on this like gnarly writing kick ever since then. And I'm just constantly like coming up with concepts and ideas. And before it was just sort of like, like after the first album, I was a bit of a like machine. It was like, go, go, go. And you go into a, into the studio and you write a song that day and you record it that day and then you leave. It, because you have to, that's the margins, right? Like that's yeah. the business. It's, and this album is, like, really special. Like, if you take the time and, like, listen to all the songs, you can tell, like, how much, like, heart I put into it and how, like, authentic it is, like, the vocal performance and stuff and just the lyrics. And I feel like I almost appreciate songwriting sort of more than ever now at this point in my life. It's just, it's, like, it... It's like it does a lot for me. It's like it can be it's healing in so many ways. And it's how I can, you know, really figure things out um, and and move on sometimes and close one chapter and go to the next. Which I, that's it's beyond special. But also to when I listen to Head Above Water. It's a redemption record to me. And it makes me feel like I can get through anything. So that struggle that's in that story, so it heals you, but also it has it helps heal others at the same exact time. So it's a beautiful album. Does, Thank you. does it what what record starts it for you? Like, do you remember the first record you wrote for it? The first song on this record? Yeah, Head Above Water. Like, so the fir the very first song that I wrote for Head Above Water, the album was um, Warrior. And head above water. They were I can't remember which one came first. And um, they're both obviously warriors about my battle. And I just like one day I was like, oh my God, like I'm a warrior. Like, and then I was like, oh my God, it's a song. <laughs> and that's what like every song on this album kind of came from, like me saying something to myself, like, and it just was like, just so authentic, like and moments of like over the last few years of like intense <laughs> I've been through. Were you encouraging yourself in these moments? Like, yeah, I think that, you know, all of the songs on this album are empowering and inspiring and, and hopeful. Mm -hmm. And I like that. And I'll be able to look back at this album and be like, I went through that. I got through that. My music helped me. It really lifted me up. And like, I always knew too, I was like, when I wrote like Head Above Water, I thought to myself like other people will be able to hear this, you know, if they're like going through a hard time or if they're depressed or whatever, even if they want to end their life, like however dark it may be, I think that this song will hit home with like a lot of people because I've gotten a lot of 
feedback throughout the years with different songs in fan mail <laughs> that, you know, my songs had helped them. Like, you know, they're in their bedroom and they're listening to my certain songs over and over and over. And it's like hitting home with them. And so I, you know, I remember that and I take that with me. And so when I make an album and I'm writing a song for me, I'm also thinking like, oh, this is so real for me. I know it's going to be so real for somebody else. And I hope that it, it moves these people. You need these words and then others need the same exact mm -hmm. words. But the battle may be different, but the words, they, they represent the same almost, right? Like mm -hmm. they can get you through. Like head above water. Uh, can't part the sea, can't reach the shore. My voice becomes a driving force. I won't this. I won't let this pull me overboard. Is that a hard song to write or a hard song to record? <clears throat> Is it easy to get it out? So I, I came up with this concept in bed, and like I literally thought I was going, <laughs> and my mom was like laying there with me, and this concept came, and I wrote down all these lyrics. And, um, and then later on, maybe it was six months later, I met Travis Clark of We the Kings. Icon. And um, I heard him playing piano at a party. And I went over and he was singing. And I just thought he was absolutely, like, incredible. And I was like, bro, I was like, do you want to write a song together? And he's like, yeah, sure. So um, he came over and... I had this idea, and so I took it to him, and um, we finished that together, and um, it was a, a really amazing, like, experience working with him. He's so talented, and we kind of felt like God gave us the rest of those lyrics, and it just, like, was instant and, like, all came together. And even how you met him, right? Because you're at a very vulnerable stage, and you've been in rooms with people. It's not always easy to open up and share your deepest stuff with somebody you don't mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. So you just meet him at a party and then you go into the stu into a session and this comes out. Yeah, I could just tell he was just such a great guy and um, there was something really special about him and I also felt like he was probably like brought into my life to like help me finish the song. Wow. So you... Uh, <laughs> it's cool. Because I feel like this the story needs to be told. Yeah. So after that and Warrior, do you feel confident enough to take take on the rest of the album? Yeah, so then after Warrior, let's see, life goes on, I get, I get up, I start dating, and then I write a song called I Fell in Love with the Devil. Yeah. <laughs> By the way. <laughs> and I was just like, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> There's so much darkness and light and in, in between the two of them. And <laughs> you're, you're in a casket, like in the music video yeah. for I Fell in Love with the, with the Devil. It, it, harsh? Way to describe this. So it was person? just like I no, not at all. Accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Gentle. <laughs> I'm and I'm doing him a favor, and that's all that I'm saying. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I got myself into a not so great sitch, and um, obviously, like when I wrote this song, I was like, this is dope because like. I feel like guys and girls like can relate to the song like I fell in love with the devil now I'm in trouble I fell in love with the devil I'm underneath his spell someone send me an angel to lend me a halo I fell in love with the devil save me from this hell like have you guys ever dated like a crazy <laughs> I think everyone has a little crazy you know? in them. So it's like I think you know everyone does have a little crazy in them. <laughs> but um <clears throat> I, did, I thought it was a really cool chorus, too, and I was really excited about it. And so with this music video, you, I got to make another little mini-movie. Which is aesthetically beautiful, Thanks. but, like, you driving your, your own hearse with your own casket in the back. I know, it's dark as f***. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I came up with that. <laughs> I was like, okay, so I have this idea for the video. I full on came up with that entire treatment. I, ca I, I called Elliot Lester, who also shot the video for Head Above Water. And I was like, okay, so I want to be driving a hearse and like singing, and I want to be the in the coffin in the back, and that's a metaphor for. So if I continue to go down this road, it's not going to be pretty. Yeah, you're done. And, um, but by the end of the video, you'll see me break myself out of. The coffin and set myself free 
um, in the bridge of the, of the song in the video, I'm slow dancing with the devil. <laughs> and um, just like fighting temptation and trying to resist him. And then I, you know, I do take a stand and walk away and make the healthier choice for myself and ends up in a positive. <laughs> Was there a defining moment when you realize that this dude is the devil and you need to get out? <clears throat> My, f I've never had like, friends intercept like that like people were really? like okay this is done this is done this is done you gotta stop like here look, we're gonna introduce you to somebody else <laughs> I was like, okay hey. look over here how does he feel about being called the devil he doesn't know <laughs> i mean maybe he knows but i don't i haven't talked about it D did he really try to fix this <clears throat> with teddy bears <laughs> sure yeah <laughs> <laughs> i, I want to know what he did but like uh how long did it last overall? Um, it was just like a eight month thing, but it was it was just not good. <laughs> when do you write this record? Like, is it is it recently? Is it after Head Above Water's out? Is it while you're writing songs for that one, that album? Um, no, I had that Devil. I had written that like, during the time it was all going on and then um and then there's some other songs on this album too <laughs> like dumb blonde <laughs> i feel like you don't like talking about this song that what devil do you not like talking about it well i can't say exactly what the song is about exactly who it's about you know i can say like i went through you know a toxic relationship and and um and wrote that and I'm proud of the song because it was like good for me and also another like situation where I was like okay this is like I get this out on pen and paper healing move on but it, but that's it. like if this album is as reflective of your life as I think it is every song kind of ends in that you succeed at least from where I'm sitting right now yeah it, it's true like I was saying like it's it's an intense album and it's very real um but it's there's a lot of strength and you know i i went i've gone through a lot in the last like few years and and definitely written about it but i've gotten through it and you know i'm just like hoping by being so open and raw with my music that it can like touch and inspire other people and encourage them and give other people like hope. Back to Dumb Blonde. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, the title, the record, where does it? Like, Should we go dark with this? I, <laughs> Do you really want to know? <laughs> yes. Same guy. <laughs> really? <laughs> Called me a Dumb Blonde. Oh. Oh, shut the Misogynist. Who and I, is? And I was like, Oh my God, he's mm, insecure. Okay, a, there's a song title. So I got together with my friend Bonnie McGee, and she's amazing. Incredible songwriter. And um, Mitch Allen. I was like, Hey, I got this co song concept. And then so I just turned like another like negative into a positive and writ wrote like uh, like an, an empowerment song about like uh, you know like you know. It's okay to be a strong, independent woman, to be working, to have an opinion, to have drive, um, to be a leader, to be an alpha, whatever you want to call it, and to not, you don't have to feel bad for that. You know, if you want to, like, be a chick who, like, stays at home, like, has, like, a chill life or whatever, that's one thing. And if you want to be out and working, that's another thing, and you should be able to be whoever you are. Amen. And, like, I was getting judged for that, and, which is so gnarly. And, um, yeah, it's just like, don't put me on the bench. Um, don't, you know, talk down to me. Don't condescend me. And it's okay to be, you know, just because I'm blonde doesn't mean I'm dumb, obviously. I mean, I definitely have my moments, but <laughs> don't we all? How, how soon after that, he calls you that, do you go and write a record? Do you need to get it out immediately or do you let it kind of marinate? I kept it in the back of my mind. And then um, probably just like a few months later, because I was making a record. So it came out. Yeah. 
do you write like, how do you document your stuff like how do you creatively keep track of all your stuff ideas i have journals well i have like notebooks like a pile of them and then i use my phone like i've constantly write, writing in notes <laughs> just voice memos do you do voice memos um yeah i'll sit down at the piano and come up with a chord progression melodies and absolutely have to record those voice notes Writing a record like Dumb Blonde, empowerment, but also uh, the one th the one thing that I also keep seeing as we were talking is like your greatest music comes from moments of like deep darkness and struggle and self discovery and like when <laughs> things happen or like you go through <laughs> stages of like just change. Yeah, your greatest music comes out. Is that like blessing and a curse? I think it's a good thing. Um, yeah, when I'm happy, it's really hard to write music. <laughs> and then I fell in love and I had, like, nothing. <laughs> because, is it because you were happy? Yeah. <laughs> Did you try writing? Yeah. I mean, I, like, uh, I mean, there was Goddess. <laughs> and it was, like, hard to, like, write a pos such a positive song. It was rare, let's just call it, say that. So it was Goddess. Is that written about a different oh, person? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my goddess. <laughs> um yeah, inspired by someone new. Okay. Is that person still I, around? I, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'm happy just like um <laughs> doing me right now. <laughs> just like focusing on my career and getting ready for this tour. So we're doing like we have, like, rehearsals, band rehearsals, working on a set list. I haven't been on tour in five years. So are you nervous first day of rehearsals? Is it, like, going back to school? Like, what is it like mentally for I you? I had band rehearsals the other day, and then we have, like, wardrobe, and then we're doing pre-production, which is, like, full stage and lighting. I haven't gotten to that stage yet, to that part. Um, but I've been um, rehearsing in chunks because we'll have, like, 20 whatever songs. Wow. Um, so yesterday, or a couple days ago, I rehearsed with um, my guitar player, and um, it was really <laughs> fun. It was really fun. Just, like, singing literally, like, all my old songs again, and, like, my happy ending, and here's to never growing up, and I'm with you, and yeah. complicated. And it felt really good. I was like, okay, this is what I just need to focus on right now. This is what feels good. I'm so grateful after, you know, getting Lyme disease and being stuck in bed for two years, That's up and down for another third, um, almost losing my life and my sanity, getting into a horrible, toxic relationship after that, and then just coming out of one thing after another and then now I'm here making music. I put out a record. It was like hard for me to do that. I didn't feel great. You know, it was me like being like, okay, I'm going to work. I'm going to try. I'm going to put this music out. I'm going to try to shoot a music video. I'm going to try to do these things. And it was like one of the scariest things like I could ever do, like go through is like to put myself out there and I'm just fighting and I'm pushing and I just continue to push every day and you know that's why my music has been healing for me it's been like I've had this goal and and it's been so amazing to just see like my fans have been patient and so supportive and then um it's like it's unbelievable I can't believe I'm gonna be doing a tour and I'm here and I'm talking to you <laughs> like okay uh, this uh, the tour coming up, the album, there's, I got goosebumps from your, from what you just said. And I, I got to gather my thoughts because it is crazy to think that somebody who from such a young age was a go, 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 go. And then to have those three years, I, I, I can't imagine it. It, that's rough. That's a lot of adjustment. That's a lot to figure out. It's. It's life. It is. It, it, it is life. And there's, life gets hard. And, you know, there's ups and downs. And, you know, you really see who, who's the, who is there for you and who isn't. 
and I gained so much perspective and I went through so much, but like, I'm just so grateful to, to have my life to, you know, to be getting tattoos and (laughs) (laughs) I just finished my sleeve, half sleeve to be, you know, dirt biking the other night and to be skateboarding with friends and to be writing music and, and planning a tour and going out to dinner and like working. And it's like, is it still hard? Yeah, it's hard, but it's like, I just keep like fighting through and doing the best I can each and every day and it, and it gets better and it continues to get better. What do you learn about yourself from all of that? Like, I, it sounds like maybe cliche and, and basic and simple, but I really just learned how to like appreciate the, the small things, like the simple things in life really are what truly mattered the most like you know the person that you love your mom your dad your family your friends um getting up for a cup of coffee or having that glass of wine at night or like cooking that meal with someone you love or just like grabbing a guitar or going for a walk just the simple things mean so much it's the things you take for granted Mm -hmm. it's truth and again perspective perspective yeah totally different how are you feeling? Well, you mentioned your guitarist on the tour. So this album, there's not a lot of electric guitar or drums. So is it going to be, how are you doing that on tour? Like, how are you going to put the old songs mixed with the new songs? So I figured, like, I'll just pretty much do, like, half old songs. Mm, three quarters. I'm trying to figure that out now. Probably, like, half the old stuff, half new. Um I have, funny enough, I have a lot of ballads, Mm -hmm. so I'm going to probably, like, come out on stage and, like, rock out, (laughs) dial it back to a ton of ballads, and then rock out at the end. And just playing the old songs and starting band rehearsals and getting ready for the tour, it's just been, like, awesome. It's just, like, all that energy of those songs from my past are, like, feeding me, and it's so exciting, and I think, like, the show is actually going to be, like, really fun and quite diverse, and not only an emotional journey for myself, but for the people that are coming out. I'm so excited. Are you coming to see me at the Greek? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please come visit me, all of you guys. Come check out the show. (laughs) Beyond. What does the record like My Happy Ending mean to you now when you perform it? I f***ing love that song. (laughs) There's like certain songs of mine that I like love performing. So My Happy Ending, I just, I don't know. Every time I perform that song and I'm with you, like I feel those songs so hard. And, like, I'm With You is probably my favorite song to perform live. And on this album, I wrote I'm With You Part 2. It's called It Was In Me. (laughs) So I got together with Lauren Christie. And she and I had written I'm With You together. And Skater Boy and Complicated. And a bunch of other songs on the first album. And now I hadn't worked with her since then. So she came over to my home and we sat, we spent like a few months around the piano and just talking and catching up. And I was like, can we please write another like killer ballad? So we wrote It Was In Me. And um, so that is kind of like, and I'm with you and like, we'll be like the next single. So what is, what did, what did I'm With You mean to you back then? Like, can you describe like, because it's such a deep record so is this conversation. <laughs> it is. So is this interview. I'm like, I need a cocktail. I know. <laughs> I, by the way, didn't mean to start off that way, but it just went, and I'm so sorry. You want some old whiskey? <laughs> <laughs> but because, like, now I'm trying to we hear. We need, like, a skate break. <laughs> yeah. Dude, can you teach me how to skateboard? Do you have one? I have you... one in my car, yeah. Yeah, we can skate out on the street after if you want. Yeah. I've You want to hear something funny? Yes. So I just got like my the rest of my arm tattooed by London Reese, this like amazing tattoo artist the other day. Like all of this. Whoa. So that's a lot. So I was like in a session for like Did you cover stuff up? Uh not really. Like six or seven hours. (laughs) And um and then like two days later, London texted me, he's like How's that poor arm? And I was like, my arm's fine. It's my calf from skateboarding. <laughs> <laughs> I was 
like all I can feel is like my leg hurts so bad, just the left side from skateboarding. And like no, <laughs> like two nights ago, I was dirt biking, and I full on wiped out. Damn. Yo, but like, oh shit. No, yes. No, no. So today, like, I can like hardly lift my arm. I should look. Yeah. That? Oh, yeah. that's a real scab. Oh yeah, and then looks good. And then I have a bruise here, Ooh. but but like, and like my butt hurts. And like yesterday, I couldn't lift up my arm all the way because I fell off my like basically it's a motorcycle. <laughs> I wiped out on my shoulder, and then I like woke up the next day. I was like, oh, f I have a tour. I need to like stop skateboarding and like dirt biking until the tour is over. And then we got like a bunch of scooters, and like you know, everyone's like oh, yeah. eating on scooters these oh, yeah. days. Oh, yeah. I'm a scooter guy. I scootered twice today. <laughs> scooter boy. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, 2019 version. That's me. <laughs> 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 that should be a parody. Listen, I'm going skateboard shopping this week to get a couple new boards because yeah. mine are like pretty fucking ancient. <laughs> I'm going to get you one. Yo, uh. you, rock on. Okay. Is this, this is what they do, right? This rock on, but like. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm not doing any hand motions. <laughs> I'll send you a pair of DCs in return. <laughs> yeah, 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 please, please. I'm a size seven. You I, want, like, the, I want the big, fat, skate the big, fat, shoe. chunky ones. Oh, uh, <laughs> done. Um, okay, I, I really do. I, the part two of my happy ending. That is, was that like my? Re- I'm with you. That's real closure. Mm-hmm. Or, or yeah, I'm with you. The, the second part of that, the, the, is that the closure that you feel like needed to happen? No, I don't look at it as closure. I was just like, I love that song so much. Like, let's write another one. Kind of like it. Like, I wanted to write a ballad with Lauren. And it's a really good song. Do you like that one? You- it's deep. But <laughs> What isn't around here <laughs> today? <laughs> it's a ballad. It's emotional. It's, it's deep AF. <laughs> b- but it's like, uh, w- when, I, when I listen to I'm With You, I thought about myself differently. And I felt that, I felt that really, could I be honest with you, the lead single of Head Above Water, like that was, but I think it's also the time period of my life that I listened to your music. Do you get what I'm saying? Is that like, when I really soaked in, especially, I soaked in today the duet with you and Travis, which is beautiful. But Oh, cool. But, but, but it, it, really, the, the voices, really, they, they come together so, I don't know, it's almost like they were meant to kind of flow. And that's how it felt when I was with Travis in the room. And he was singing, I was like, play, say something. You know that song? (laughs) And so he started singing that and I was singing with him and I was like, we really need, I was thinking we needed to like have a duet initially. So now this year, like this month, we're releasing our duet of Head Above Water. So Travis Clark of We The Kings, his vocals on that. And he he sounds like an angel. That's literally what I thought. And like, but like when we were writing... It was like that. It was like, I know it sounds crazy, but it was like a spiritual experience with that song. Everything about it, like how Head Above Water, how the lyrics came to me in bed, and then like how he just like showed up in my house. Yeah, that's... And then he's singing on my piano, and I like walk over, and I'm still like recovering, and I'm like, wow, you're so amazing. Do you want to write together? And then he comes back, and then we finished Head Above Water together, and then his voice, and and him and his story and where he comes from. And he, you know, grew up in a Christian home. I grew up in a Christian home. Our mom, we're like, our moms are going to be so proud of us. And like, we're like, I think we've even prayed together. And like, you know, we, this, it just like, he sat down on the piano. We finished the song in like an hour and like everything just came to us. And we really did feel like it was like from God, but like, but see, like, I, but when I listened to that record, I had a moment like that. It was a yeah. realization. I was, I really felt like I was drowning with a lot of stuff going on in work and in life, and it was, it was, I don't know that, like that one. I listen to constantly because it's a reminder to me. So I, awesome. I feel it, but I, but I think that's also a testament to the the records you create is that they're they're very true, they're very honest, and like I feel the deepest connection to a, a lot of these records based on what I'm going through in my life and what I need to hear, like what I need to, just what I need that what somebody needs to say to me to wake myself up. That's it. <laughs> Slap me in the face. What what's bigger wow about? Um. <laughs> 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 Um, I just put on an, on my Instagram today a video and used that song in it. You should look at it. <laughs> Is that, does that answer the question? Um, 
no. <laughs> <laughs> but here, let me answer it. Um, <laughs> it's just about like wanting <laughs> to uh, just to have a bigger wow. <laughs> just to <laughs> wanting to no, want, it. being bored, um, wanting some excitement, um, just wanting to kind of like. I don't know if you want to call it like wanting a high, wanting to have fun, wanting to like, you know, be bored with like, you know, life and just like wanting to get thrown up in the clouds <laughs> and stay up there. <laughs> That's a just bigger like, wow. Yeah. Is pop punk dead? Oh my God. No, it'll always be alive. Maybe on the radio <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> right now. It, sh- it doesn't need no. to be and it shouldn't be. No, it's not. How do you define the genre? Can you? Like, can you define the genre of pop punk? Pop punk? Yeah, like, I, I, I'm sorry to switch it so quickly, but, like, I mean, like, what... How do you define it? Like, is it a lifestyle today? Because it's changed over the years, and... Is it wrong in saying that? I mean, you're I somebody mean, who's been a, defined by an, the genre. It's, it's an attitude. It's a spirit. It's a way of life. It's... It's an energy. It's it's youthful. It's 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 rock. It's raw. It's loud. It's rebellious. I feel like now's the time for pop punk. Yeah. But pop punk doesn't exist within your most recent album. I mean, it does actually still. Like I fell in love with the devil. It's pretty. It's punky. I mean, I guess there's a bit of an attitude in That's Dumb it. Blonde. Dumb Blonde has a bit of a you know. And and with I think Devil out of um, all of the songs the most that was the one that I was like I really didn't hold back on. Is there a record that we should listen to off this album to really get to know you the most? I mean, they all have a little piece of me, and they are all different little s- stories of you know my journey in my life. So there's a little bit of me in every. In, in all of the songs. So listen to the album. <laughs> yeah, listen to the album. I totally like, I I, I brought up my question about pop punk and I ruined the the energy in the room. <laughs> no, it's just a hard question to answer in a it, way. It is, because I kept trying to think to myself, like, where is it today? Like, and, and Travis was here and we had that conversation because we the kings, like, like Skyscraper, like that was his record, I'm Check pretty sure. Check Yes Juliet. Check Yes Juliet, like, th- that like boys like girls like there's so many different things that you helped usher in like and then Green Day before you that I feel like it's almost missing like it it almost in a sense breaks my heart but it also makes me happy that like my 12 year old cousin's first concert was a Panic at the Disco show like two months ago because like that that means that that, that pop punk is still alive and it, it, there's a part of it that's thriving but like. Where's the next generation? I know. Where are they at? <laughs> well, it's like everyone's still out there rocking, like some 41, Blink 182, Green. Like They're everyone's still, th- still out there. But like. It's still alive. The young kids ain't rocking. No, not so much. <laughs> yeah, like where's, like where's the 17 year old that's rocking? Where's the 17 year old going through something and writing about it? I, yeah, I know. I feel like. I mean, Billie Eilish is doing it in her yes. own way, yeah. kind of. It's not like the punk rock sound, but she kind of has that whole attitude towards it, I guess. Billie Eilish credits you for, like, her. <laughs> she, you know, she, have you heard that? That Yeah, she's dope. We just went to the Greek theater and, and saw her concert live, and I was able to meet her. She's super sweet. What, what are you thinking? I, I mean, really, like, you, you ushered that in? One of the many things you've ushered in. Um, Wild? yeah, yeah, she, uh, she hit me up and, and she was like, yeah, you know, like, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. And I met her and her brother and they were just like, it's, it was like so crazy for us because we both were like, so into your music and, um, that was just like really inspiring and it was really nice to hear and I'm just so happy to see like such young talent and a girl that's just like doing her thing, you know? being herself and making music and working her butt off and super successful I think you know she put on a awesome live show and 
you know, like I hit her up because also we were talking and I was like, you know, if you need anything, let me know. Cause she's like the exact same age I was, you know, she's 17, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Around there. And that's when my first album came out and like, um, I know how like scary and like crazy and like gnarly that can be. And like, I'm like super proud of her. Like she's, she's out there and she's strong and their music's like on point and it's very like unique and and authentic and cool and she just doesn't give a fuck. and she's like got her own you know style and and her like her show was great like she carried that entire album throughout the her concert and just had the audience in the palm of her hands and that's like really difficult to do she's killing it have you guys discussed working together um no mm. That'd be cool. That'd be so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think about what life would have been like if you had social media back then? Yeah, so but, different, right? Because everything was like print, so we just had to like go around and do all these. Probably had to work more. <laughs> we had to work. Yeah. We had to like do all these interviews. You, you were physically all everywhere. All these photo shoots. I was literally in a different city every day, yeah. and um, flying every day, and it was like a lot of work. It was. It was like great, but it was really grueling. And, um, but also, I think back then, too, like the fan base or the listener or the, the, uh, the public in general were just like sort of really, if they, if they, you know, clicked with a musician, they kind of got like really into them. And there wasn't like as many around. So you end up being like on posters on walls and then like they wait for articles you're on a, the cover of a magazine and they get it and they read it and there's like something a really cool about that it, it, and I got to experience that and you know I came out in 2002 when we were still selling albums people were buying CDs holding them like walking them over to me to sign and I still have your CD you do yeah it's at my house in Wayne New Jersey next to the boom box that I used to listen to it on. that's dope yeah you're right. Like, I still have my boombox too, man. <laughs> Where, where's your boombox? And my Walkman. Yeah. yeah. And my what is the Discman? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The yellow thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like gray and orange. Yeah. <laughs> Those ridiculous headphones. Yeah. I mean, it was a totally different time. It was a time of physical. Yeah. It was physical everything, right? Mm-hmm. From posters to you need to go mm-hmm. there to, but but it was a more intensity of a fandom. Yeah. That only few have now, mm-hmm. but only few had it before. Mm-hmm. But streaming made the way for anybody to find an audience. Mm-hmm. Changes it. It's just different, yeah. It, it, crazy to look at, like to mm-hmm. see how it's evolved. Mm-hmm. But it's cool because I'm still here and I'm still making music, and I'm like, okay, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. You still look exactly the same too. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you got a tour coming up. Do yeah. we know uh, where the first stop is going to be? <clears throat> so tour starts in September in Seattle. Rock on. Then, and 18th is LA. So September 14th, um, we're starting the tour, kicking the tour off in Seattle, and then um, playing the Greek Theater in Los Angeles September 18th. I fell in love with the devil. That is a single right now. I do have a question. I noticed that, so you said the first two songs you wrote were Head Above Water and Warrior, and they start and end the album. Did you do that on purpose? Good question. Thank you for noticing. (laughs) Um, Yeah, kind of, like, after it made sense to open and close Mm. with that, Um, and then, like, the album being called Head Above Water, and the first single being called Head Above Water, and the tour is Head Above Water, and then... um, Warrior, just like it's like obviously like those two were about my health battle, and I didn't, you know, it made sense to. I always put like one of my end my album with like one of my favorite songs, mm-hmm. too. Well, why w- or a song that means a lot, or that is like powerful to me? Do you want people to listen to the entire thing? Is yes. that the hook? Yes, absolutely. Do they do that anymore these days? I, <laughs> <laughs> is it just like they just pick a couple songs? <laughs> Top to bottom is the recommended way to listen to yes. this album. Get it in vinyl and <laughs> sit around with some wine. <laughs> yeah. 
Go old school, old yeah. school. But by the way, I was wondering when I love your clothing line. Thank you for sending me all the gear. Yeah, my sister's wearing the hoodie. Um, who is Abby Dawn to you? Is that like a side of you? Is that a character you've created? Abby Dawn's my nickname. So like my dad started calling me that when oh. there was it was like a street name. And then in high school, so then I, I I just became known as Abby. So everyone was like Abby, and then like some of my friends still today call me Abby. And then like if we're like out, like it used to be my alias name, but not anymore. And then <laughs> if we're out and instead of someone in public, instead of someone yelling like my name, they'll just call me Abby. That's more low key. Keep it DL. <laughs> yeah, that's appropriate. Because if somebody yells Avril Lavigne, I'm running. <laughs> I'm looking. <laughs> Go it. Um, wow. Well, the one other question I had is what is the future of your sound? Like, do you like where you are now? Or do you want to go back to your older sound? Do you want to change it again? I've been writing um, uh, a lot lately and just coming up with like more f- song concepts and stuff. And um, I think the next album will be a little more up and fun and a little more aggressive. Okay. There are some guitars and live drums Bring on the back. production. Yep. Yeah. But it, how is that connected to your, is that connected to your life right now? Is that your present? Yeah, I just, um, I'm kind of like, you know, like a more, you know, f- fun, energetic, like a little more aggressive, like, um, headspace right now, I think, place. Yeah. You are truth. <laughs> That's, I again, one of the many things that have been, like, consistent through all the pieces of work that you put out there is truth. <laughs> It's reflective of your reality. Head Above Water is the album you should listen to. I fell in love w- with the devil. That mm-hmm. is, with the devil, not a devil, the Satan. <laughs> n- there's no, don't get it wrong. <laughs> I fell in love with the devil. That is a single. Ever Levine, uh, final thoughts? Well, yeah, qui- yeah. In the you said of- you grew up in a Christian house, Christian household. So what was it like writing a song about I fell in love with the devil? Well, that's a metaphor, obviously. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> has nothing to do with like my spiritual belief. Uh, but um, I know some people were like saying some stuff about that. They didn't like that. But um, no, it was just really a metaphor for just like falling in love with somebody who is like super toxic and just not a good person. A POS. That's how I. A POS. P- oh! <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a new song. <laughs> really quick, thank you for the song Girlfriend, and then thank you for the Girlfriend Lip Gloss is Poppin' remix. Oh, Little Mama. The greatest <clears throat> remix. Oh my God, I forgot about that. Of my lifetime. That's incredible. I, I played it at every dance I would DJ. It got the party going, it got me going. I don't even, how was that remix born? Because I feel like the only the only moment that I can kind of connect to that that is similar was like Jay Z Lincoln Park type era. You know what I'm saying? Like that that that, that lo- was so dope, and I got to shoot two music videos for Girlfriend, yeah. and then and I love performing Girlfriend live too. That's another favorite. And then on during that tour, uh, the Best Damn tour, I uh, 2008, I saying girlfriend at the top of the of the show and then as my encore <laughs> I did it twice Bravo. I love it so much I did it twice what do you love about it oh my god the energy it's just dope it's just like running around and the crowd gets super f- amp and just like bouncing and it's just like it's just so much fun I love singing that one live um there's a lot of people who hate singing their old songs, and they've sat right where you're sitting yeah. on this couch. Oh, I love it. You, you, yeah. What, what do you say to those people who are lucky enough, just like you, to have timeless records? Because, and I, like, base my life upon, like, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I did that on my third album, or, like, that was on my first album. Like, third chapters. Literally, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it just brings, they're all moments in time. I've had a long career. So, like, complicated Skater Boy takes me back to like necktie, like first album, like necktie. traveling the world for the first time, <laughs> like caking on the black eyeliner, <laughs> um, you know, and then like the best damn thing, like those were my Derek days, like, you know, and Girlfriend was the album, you know, Smash and, um, that was like fun and pink and like I was living in LA and, um, 
you know, married <laughs> to another rock star. It was wild. And um, just, um, and then like, <laughs> this album, not so fun, but no. <laughs> <laughs> but you come, yes, but you come out on the other side. Yes, I do. And this album is just like, <laughs> gets real album. <laughs> but that's um, life. And I'll look back at that and be like, wow, I went through that and like, holy shit. and just hope that like i can inspire and like help other people and just like be proud of myself for being a warrior and keeping my head up and like continuing to like just keep going and climbing the mountain and climbing the mountain even though i keep getting slapped and knocked back down <laughs> but keep going yeah consistency is it mm -hmm. yeah oh, this is great yeah <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Avril Lavigne, everybody. Yeah. An honor. Guys, thank you so much for having me. Standing ovation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. we stand for you. Thank you. I really hope you enjoyed that conversation. If you did, please subscribe and also check out our podcast. There's a link in the description. And also comment and like and do things. Other interviews are on the screen somewhere. So click them. Thanks for watching.